Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn more about Docker Compose workflow. In case you didn't follow the instruction in the previous lecture to write the Docker Compose file, I've uploaded the source code to GitHub. You can get the source code by running git stash and git checkout v0.4. In this lecture, I'll demon how a typical Docker Compose workflow looks like. Here I'm at the directory where the Docker Compose file lives. Usually, a typical Docker Compose workflow starts with a docker compose up command to start the application, often followed by a dash d option to run the docker compose command in the background. After all the containers start up, we can run docker compose ps to check the status of the containers managed by compose. As you see, both two containers are up running. Another useful docker compose command is docker compose logs, which would output colored and aggregated logs for the compose managed containers. You can also add a dash f option to follow log output. It would output appended log when the log grows. Docker also allows you to output the logs of a specific container by appending the container name in the end. When we are done with the application, we can issue docker compose stop command to stop all the running containers without removing them. The same containers can be restarted if we run docker compose up or docker compose start command. Or if you want to completely remove all the containers, you can do docker compose rm. Now docker is asking if you really want to remove those containers. Just type Y and hit enter to confirm. Now the containers are deleted. Now if we do docker compose ps again. See? All the containers are gone. A typical docker compose workflow usually invokes making changes to the source code or images and rebuilding the containers afterwards. Let's just open up the docker file and change the username to James. Now the question becomes, how can we let Docker rebuild the image? By default, Docker Compose Up will only rebuild the image if the image doesn't exist. Let's prove that. Just run Docker Compose Up again to start up all the containers. Run Docker PS to verify all the containers are up. We log into the Docker app container. Now we are inside the container. But as you see, we logged in as admin, not James. So our change doesn't take effective. This is because Docker Compose Up doesn't rebuild the image because Docker found out the image exists. You might want to ask, how can we force Docker to rebuild the image? we need to use the docker compose build command, which will rebuild any images created from the docker files. Let's give a try. See, docker rebuild the image and printed out all the instructions. Now let's rerun docker compose up. This time, docker recreates the docker app container because it found a new image. Let's do docker ps. We can see the Docker app container is newly created. If we log into the Docker app containers again, now we logged in as James. So the takeaway here is to use Docker Compose build whenever you need to update an image. I have demoed a lot of Docker Compose commands in this lecture. Let's review what we have learned about Docker Compose workflow so far. Docker Compose Up starts up all the containers. Docker Compose PS checks the status of the containers managed by Docker Compose. Docker Compose Logs outputs colored and aggregated logs for the Compose managed containers. Docker Compose Logs with dash F option outputs appended log when the log grows. Docker Compose Logs with a container name in the end outputs the logs of a specific container. Docker Compose Stop stops all the running containers without removing them. 
Docker Compose RM removes all the containers. Docker Compose Build rebuilds all the images. That's it for this lecture. I'll see you later.